This is Code.org, and you have been asked to paint a square for the neighborhood to mark off a safe play area for children. Oh, that's so nice of us. All right, decompose the problem. Decompose the problem to write an algorithm for moving forward as long as there are no obstacles, painting a square, <laughs> helpful, any other algorithm. Getting started, yep, we got to import painterplus.java. If you're missing it, guys, you got to hit new file, name it exactly that, and click on the link, copy over the code. I'm not, clicking backpack, clicking import, uh, clicking the check, and import. And this is looking great. So, let's see what we have. Translate your pseudocode from the decomposition handout to write move fast method. Now, this might have been your warm up, depending on your class. Um, regardless, boom. If you don't have it, they link it right here. And this, again, pseudocode, which is excellent, right? It's going to explain the problem, and it's asking you to pause and think about it. I want to hit upon again, guys. Work at Google, work at Amazon, work wherever you want. Big tech firm insert here. Pseudocode's a thing. Developers do it. You do it to plan stuff, to communicate with one another. It's it's a common practice. And so sometimes this feels like ah, I got kid stuff. This is an assignment. This is a real world thing. So that being said, you want to work through this. You want to use your own words and you want to plan it out. I want to be able to test what I'm doing for this while I'm working to demonstrate. So I'm headed back over here and let's actually first set up our function signatures. So we got move fast. What's a function signature? Just like when you sign your name, it's the function's name. Move fast. Now I know a function or a method has parentheses and curly brackets. I'm gonna be missing something though with this, right? And you can go look at all these other ones as a reference. Oh, public void. So even if I'm not certain what that means yet, it's a good guess to include it. We will learn more about that. Public is access, void is what it returns. But for now, just trust all the other stuff in here. You need it. All right, what's our other one? Paint a square. Cool. Public void mm, paint square. Bam, 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 bam. All right, same deal, parentheses, two signatures. And now I'm headed over here, okay? And again, I want to do this so I can test my code as I'm doing that, as I'm creating it. So let's instantiate an object, painter plus. My painter plus equals new parentheses bam. Cool. We have an object now. What do we need to do? Well, I know for this first one, I'm actually going to take this description right here and do some move forward as long as there are no obstacles. Okay. And always use their examples down here to get an idea of exactly what's needed. All right. So move forward as long as there are no obstacles. I'm going to go ahead and write some pseudo pseudo code down here, actually. Just as a comment, and I'll have to delete this later. All right. So I need to move forward. And oh, let me fix this. Let me go back to the document for the description. Move fast. All right. Copy, control C, and I'm going to throw this here. Let's decompose it. Move forward and collect paint as long as there are no obstacles. Guys, as long as all as long as is almost always a loop. Actually, it is a loop. And what they're asking for is to repetitively do something. So as long as, well, okay, well, well, right? Well, what? Well, there are no obstacles. So well, no obstacles, which what that means to me is while we can move slash painter can move. Okay. And then how am I going to word my pseudocode while the painter can move? Um, we need to move. Painter, move forward. Okay, cool. Now what? All right, so we got the, uh, oh, and collect paint. So I'm tempted immediately to be like, okay, well, if we can move forward, we can then collect paint, right? However, painter, what if there is no paint? If there's no paint, we get an error. And I can prove it to you because we're in the neighbor class. My painter. Uh, what is the name of that method? Take paint. Well, there is none. So error. So we have to check. We need to ask the computer a question again. If painter what? Well, we have some options here. If painter, here's all the methods we have access to by the painter class. 
Well, we could do is on paint or is on bucket. And these are Boolean, so these both work as true false. Now, I just had to re-record this because I did is on paint. And paint just means a square that is painted. We need to know if we're on the bucket. We need to know if we can pick up some paint. All right. So if uh, painter is on a bucket, bucket, painter collect paint. Do we collect paint? Yep. Okay. Cool. Got it. And now with pseudocode, this will be much easier. All right. So first I know. And what do I need to check? No obstacles. Well, there's a method for that. Right here, right? Another Boolean. We can say can move. Boom, boom, parentheses. Doo -doo. And we can use painter methods because painter plus here, keep in mind, extends painter. It can do everything painter plus can do. So this responds with a Boolean, a true and a, or a false. We're asking the computer a question. Hey, computer, can my painter move right now? If it says true, if it looks like right now it says true, it has to run the code inside. And then once we do plop forward, well, first, actually, once we do plop forward, it has to check again. It hits the bottom and it goes, ah, I got to check one more time. My parent plus can move. And if we can still move, we'll keep repeating everything in this block until it is false. When would this be false? When can we no longer move? Right there. Quipow. Great. All right. So now we have that ready to rock. Let's see. If the painter is on a bucket, the painter needs to collect paint. All right. So if in another condition is on bucket, we already looked this one up. And now every time this runs, as long as we can move forward, first we'll move forward. And the next thing is the computer is going to ask if we are on a bucket. The code in this will only execute if we are standing on a bucket. What do we want to do? We want to take paint. All right? However, notice this number eight. How many times does this take paint? One. So even though this will all run, guys, right? It's going to, we're asking a question here. Hey, computer, can my painter plus move? Computer says yes, right here. We plop forward. Bloop. We then say, are we on a bucket? The computer would say false. There's no bucket here. Cool. So this code does not run. We hit the bottom of there, fall through, hit the bottom of our wall loop, and now it must check again when we're standing here. Can we move forward? Yes, we can. We move forward. Still not on a bucket. Blah, 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 blah. We get already here, all the way here, and we're not on a bucket. If we were, though, what if this bucket had right here 100 uh, paint in it, right? If it had 100 paint, how many would we get? And I want you to think about this. If it has a hundred paint, how many would we get? We're only going to loop if we can move. We can't move right here. So sure, we'll plop forward right there. And we'll ask computer, is my painter on a bucket? The computer would say true if there was a bucket with a hundred paint right here. It would be like, yeah, yeah, you are. Get you some paint. And we'd be great. I'm, that this is what would happen. And then my painter plus would take one item of paint. We need to get it all, though, because watch what would happen now. Once we get that paint, we hit the bottom of our if, we hit the bottom of our wall loop, we have to check again, and we ask the computer, hey, computer, can we move? And the computer says, nope, that's a cone. And the wall loop's done, we fall beneath it and run other code. Well, that's a problem, because we never got to take all the paint. So we would need an internal loop here, or, if we're smart, right, we don't do another loop, another wall loop, we can do take all paint cool bam this should do it and while that's running i'm gonna go ahead and copy this code copy boop head over to painter plus go down to our method move fast and paste we got to fix this up though because this object is only over here we are inside the painter plus class so we don't need my painter plus and the dot we can run all those methods directly i'm gonna kill all these off that looks good. All right, let's give it a shot. Now I can get rid of all of this code. And the super nice thing about this is it now only takes one line. My painter plus dot move fast, right? And now though, what happens when I get to the end here? Notice I stopped before. Well, I'm gonna wanna turn and I'm gonna wanna move again. So why don't we use it again, right? Why would I do?
This would be crazy to do, guys. Don't do this. There's no need. We can just use what we already have, right? Let's turn right and just run our method again. And this is what's great about creating a method is we can use it over and over wherever we need without having to rewrite all that code. Cool. We got that. All right, now what do we need? We need to paint a square. So I need to end up here, I think, to start the square. All right, so that will get us to this starting point. Now, what do we need to do to paint a square? I want to break this down into steps, so let's think about it. Well, obviously, we got to paint a line. Okay, what are things we need to check, though? We can't just, and then, well, turn, paint, and paint another line. Things we need to know. We need paint. All right, just off the top of my head, we're going to need to paint a line. We'll have to turn. We're going to have to paint uh, another line, four lines. What do we need to check, though, that we don't run out of paint and, you know, we don't want to hit walls or obstacles? All right, so what's going to be the first thing I check? And this is somewhat preference. You could say I want to check move and then do paint and sign. I'm going to do move. All right, no, let's do paint. Wall, since the goal of this is to paint, wall the painter can paint, right? What do I want to do? Well, first, since I'm already standing here, I should be, I'm going to say painter paint, right? Then what? Well, I need to step forward, okay? So let's go ahead and move. However, I hate just doing this, because what if something was in our way? We didn't check yet. So I hate this. We want to check. And on this level, it might work without doing this, but I would argue that is wrong because you want code to work in all sorts of conditions. It should be reusable. So if painter can move, move. Okay. What if we can't move? What if we're not able to move? Hmm. If we're not able to move, we're going to need a turn. So we can do an else. Now, this will cause an issue, because when we get to this side here, guys, it will be a problem. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to get this down, and then we're going to have to debug this, because this is not perfect yet. Remember with paint, we got to put in a color? Green? Sure, whatever. Put in white. That's the example. My painter plus can. And then, if I can move... What do I want to do? Move. And if I can't, right? So that's an else. And if I have to turn, I can turn right. This isn't going to work. I want to show you why. Oh, for one reason I didn't even think. What did I do here? Oh, has paint. All right, here's an issue. When we pause right here, Right? We say, hey, my painter plus paint green. Cool, we painted right here if we're standing. Then we ask the computer a question conditionally. Hey, can I move right now? Well, actually, let me put the painter here. Right? So we would paint green. Painter's here. We say, hey, computer, can we move right now? Computer would check. Painter, mm, yeah, you, you can. That's true. If this is true, we got to move. Great. We step forward. Now, since we this was true, we're not allowed to run the else statement because the if ran. So we skip all of that, we hit the bottom, and we go back to the top of our loop and we say, hey, does the painter still have paint? True, I would have paint. I'm standing here. So what do we do? We paint it green. Bam. It's painted now. Now I say, hey, computer, can I move? Computer says, false. You're staring at a cone. Okay, since this is false, this line absolutely cannot run. Since this is false, though, the else absolutely has to run. So I turn right. Cool, I'm facing this way. Hit the bottom of our loop, wall loop. We go back to the top and I say, hey, computer, do I still have paint? Computer says, yep. My painter plus, now I would paint the same square green. There's a few ways to get around this, but I'm going to throw in an if where I check. If. So if my painter plus is on paint, I'm going to cut this line. And so what I did is I just put this if statement and put it inside. If my painter plus is on paint, that's not what I want. I want to ask if I'm not on paint. And this makes sure that I could only paint if I'm not on paint. 
and that works. There's more than one good way to do this. I'm going to go ahead and move this over, and then we're going to talk about a couple other options. Cut. Uh, I'm going to get rid of all that. Go down to my method. Paste. And I have to get rid of all this, right? Because we're now in the class. We don't need the object. We have direct access. Cool. All right, let's give this a shot. I'm going to head back over here. All right. Works great. All right, let me show you some examples that I, well, one, code has more than one option. Oh, actually, we're not done, guys. We don't want this to be green. This is called hard coding it. We don't want that decision. I want a parameter in here. Do they ask for it? Even if they don't, I want it. Okay, they don't specifically, I don't care. So instead of adding the color ourselves, I want to go up and look at some other things that we've done, like paint line where we give a parameter, okay? So, oops, I'm gonna say it's a string, which just in computer science or in code means it's a word or a sentence and color. And instead of having this say green, I'm gonna say how, not in quotes, write the word color. And now we get to decide when it's ran. So now it's gonna use the variable color, but it's gonna err unless I put in a color. Um, I'll do white like their example, I guess. All right, I want to show you other options. Code does not just have one answer. It absolutely doesn't, right? So things I have seen, instead of if you can move, move, and then else turn right, I have seen you could flip these, no problem, right? If you cannot move, boom, boom. That works great. I've also seen it arranged so that instead of saying can move, you only move if you're on paint. That would also work fine. Now I want to show you something I really hate. My painter plus color. It technically works. Move. All right. And then what? Well, in here I say. I do a negation right here. Gonna get rid of this junk. If I can't move, I can turn right. I hate this. Here's why. It works. Works great. This code's not reusable. The idea of a method is that we can run it a bunch. It can be used all sorts of ways. We need to check different variables to make sure that it can. It works on this level. Here's my problem. What if there is an obstacle right here? We only check if we can move right here. So if we go back around and we turned, assuming that we can move, we turned right here and said, okay, cool, we turned and there's an obstacle right here, it's going to err. We're going to run into it. And that's why I don't like this method. It technically works. It probably meets the requirements of this level. I don't like it. My students don't do it. All right. Bam, bam, bam. Cool. Looks good. And just so I don't forget, I'm going to go ahead and click Painter Plus, commit this code, Painter Plus. And quick little note there, commit and say, awesome, onward.